Let's talk tortilla española. Tortilla española is the famous Spanish tapa. Tapa? Tapa. Tapa, right? Singular? This is a recipe, this is a dish that we all should be making right now all the time, but particularly now in this age of quarantine, it is easy. It uses ingredients you likely already have in your pantry, and if not, they're very easy to get. And you can enjoy it for days in many forms at many different times of the day, at many different temperatures. If you've got some potatoes kicking around, if you've got some onions kicking around, if you've got some eggs and you have some olive oil, you can do this right now and you'll be enjoying it for, you know, the next day or two or at least the next hour if you have an appetite like mine. Let's look at how I made this. Step number one is actually to prep the eggs. I have eight eggs. This is scaled to fit a 10 inch skillet. And the reason I'm starting with the eggs is because I want to salt them now. I want to salt them now because pre-salting eggs, you may have heard the opposite, but I'm telling you now, pre-salting the eggs is actually going to help them retain moisture and be more tender as opposed to salting at the last minute. So, pardon my open compost, but trying to do the right thing by the environment. Here we go, eight eggs, egg number one. Oh, my compost smells. Damn. Oh. Get some air incorporated in. So what I need to do is I need to cut up my uh, potatoes and my onion. I need, I need to start cooking them in the oil. Now I'm using Yukon Golds. Um, they're my preferred potato for this. They're nice and silky. At least they're my preferred potato among the potatoes widely available. In the United States but you know you can you can make this work with russets it'll be a little bit of a starchier texture you won't have that same silkiness but it'll still be good like you know at its heart this is peasant food right like you're gonna use what you have I'll start heating up the oil while I'm cutting my vegetables yeah so the one thing I think probably one of the most shocking things looking at this if, if you're seeing me make this is I use a lot of oil I find that it just makes it easier to get all of the, the large amount of onion and potato um, submerged enough that you can get the cooking going at, at a decent clip, especially because the pan is so full. It's a lot of oil and it's going to seem wasteful, but here's what's cool. You can save the oil. So after you've put the potatoes and onion in it, you can save the oil and use it in other things. And it's delicious. It tastes, I mean, it's onion, like, fried onion infused oil just think about that like this is not going to waste you know the recipe as i wrote it says to get the oil hot until it's shimmering and then add the vegetables the truth is you can kind of add them at any point because it's such gentle cooking you know as as you slice stuff you can just drop it in it's going to slowly warm up it's going to slowly start sizzling and bubbling and that's it you're good that's all that's all you need to do the hardest part about this is forming the tortilla. Everything else about it is pretty easy, and that's what's so nice about this. As long as you have these beautifully cooked, tender potatoes and onions fried in oil, and then you cook them with the eggs, even if your tortilla breaks, I mean, you can still eat it. I've had people say, oh, you don't need to use so much oil, and it's like, yeah, that's true, but then you stand around even longer waiting for it all to like cook down into the oil because there's like that much less of it. Very gently, I'm gonna just sort of start to give these a turn so that the ones on the top start to descend into the drink, into the soup, and otherwise, you know, you're gonna have a little bit too uneven cooking. Here we go. See, it's it's getting more and more into the oil. I'll let it go for the full 25 because the onions seem like they could still get a little bit meltier, but we're pretty we're pretty good. Okay, so what I need to do is I'm gonna pour this off really carefully through a fine mesh strainer so that the hot oil, and obviously do this into a heat proof bowl, this is all gonna drain. And it's okay if your potatoes break too, by the way. Like, it's nice to have the pieces in the mix but it's also like everything should be so tender anyway that like it's kind of melting into itself too so here we go with this next step is we add the potatoes and onions to the eggs and we all i have to add salt to season this mass of potato and onions 
very slowly flop that in so good and salt you know i don't know you be careful not to over salt but you do it's a lot of potato you can you can take a bit of salt just just don't push your luck i'm going to try to choose a plate it's a good flipping plate with a nice nice easy easy slope so that i can slide it three tablespoons of oil i'll just scoop it up right there and pour it right into my skillet and it was a little shy so we'll just give it a little bump there we go now this is all just about moving shaking you want to move and shake because you want it to get kind of custardy and if you don't move your eggs enough it's going to set hard on the exterior that's in contact with the pan and it's going to be too loose and soupy in the middle and you want something that is ideally exactly how done you do this is personal preference um, a little bit loose in the center is really nice so we're going to go into the pan Whoa. scrape this out stir and shake as it starts to set i think you'll feel and you can also swirl it like so that you get like a, a clockwise or counterclockwise motion which can be helpful if your heat source is sort of cooking if the pan is sort of cooking more on one side than the other which sometimes happens even when you have a good pan that just ensures that it's sort of cooking all the way around as evenly as possible and you can see it's like these edges are starting to form you start forming this kind of puck shape it's not going to hold it first but you can just you know start giving it the suggestion that it might need to hold this puck shape And also, you know, another thing that's personal preference is like how brown do you want the egg to get on the outside? You know, some people like it more blonde, some people like to get more color on it. So to flip it, I'm turn off my heat for a second. I'm gonna get my plate on top here. Ow, Daniel. And you gotta be fast about this. If you if you're slow, if you're slow, you're gonna regret it. Oh my god, it's heavy. One, two, this is sliding so much. Three, please don't go sideways on me. Okay, you gotta be fast. If you're hesitant, you're gonna have a problem. Now I just very carefully slide it right back into the pan. And I'm going to get rid of this plate because it's covered in raw egg. You know, I'm willing to take some salmonella risk, but like, at my limits. Get the heat back on. And now this is the, really the opportunity to form it into like that really classic puck shape. Like it's, it doesn't taper at the edges. It's kind of got these walls. This is heavy. It's a lot of food. That's what's so great about this. <laughs> this is a lot of food. And I'm, you know what? I'm really gonna, I'm gonna stop here. I want mine a little bit juicy. Hopefully stopping here will guarantee that. Just enough heat to set the other side. Get another plate, clean plate, and slide and just very carefully slide it out onto this plate. Give it a little push, center it on this plate. Let's cut a wedge very tender all the way through hot get a nice little piece here whoa oh that's good oh that is like really nice it is juicy right in the center like you can see it's not runny some people like it runny it's not runny but it's like when I squeeze it, it like squishes in the middle. If you want some aioli, it's very nice. You don't have to have it with aioli. You know what I do want though, for reals? Spanish cider. Salud. Oh, that's good. Mmm. Mmm. God damn it. It's so good. The flavor 
Here's what's crazy. So it's olive oil, onion, potato, and egg. Salt. It tastes like there's chicken fat in it, like there's schmaltz in it. It's got this like, there's something about that. It's probably because that onion, that fried onion flavor is making me think of schmaltz combined with the egginess, combined with the uh, olive oiliness. This is the kind of thing where you make it and you're like, this is going to be awesome. This is going to be something I can snack on for the next two days. And then you eat the whole thing. Here's a delicious thing that I made when I was so tired and it still came out great and I can eat it now and I can eat it later and that's happiness.